It's not at all strange that they met, or for that matter, that they married. They represent a good example, as any, of two people that are destined for each other. Chester James Carmel was born of Cajun and Irish heritage on October 25, 1944, and raised in Louisiana. He is the eldest of eight children and was heavily influenced by his mother, a former school teacher who very adeptly sold encyclopedias door to door with him in tow. Mary Jo Madden was born of Croatian and Irish heritage in August of a su substantially later year in South Chicago. <laughs> she, is, she is the eldest of three children and was heavily influenced by her mother, who was a successful entrepreneur, entrepreneurial owner of a person. Politics. So there's at least seven different things that are so unique about this cycle that none of us, no matter how we sound like we know what we're talking about on TV, uh, we don't know what we're talking about because we've never seen it before. So let me just go over these seven things for you to look for while you're uh, partaking in this presidential campaign. And if you're, I don't really even care what party you're in. If you have a chance to be a volunteer or do anything in it in, in the campaign, either it's just stay or a presidential one. This is a pivotal state. It's a fascinating thing to do. This is the right age to do it, so you can be an expert on the The first thing that, and some of these you've heard of, but just to elaborate on them, is the duration of this. You hear all these bloviators talking about this campaign so long, too long. I don't think so. I like that it's long. I think we're given the fact that we have the sorts of issues we have on the table. Duration is good. We can have lots of time to sort through this debate, uh, and many debates that have to be uh, deep to get to some of the to the heart of the problems that are involved in this next election. It will have consequences, though, in ways that we probably don't know yet. Not least being uh, its effect on current government. The, what's happening in Washington is, since so many uh, uh, members of Congress in both chambers and in both parties are running for president or thinking about running for president or being lined up by their colleagues who are running for president, it has a, uh, in some ways, a chilling effect on governance. It creates a gridlock in one sense. It also has a, an impact on policy that is not representative always of the larger electorate, or the larger citizenry. It's policy is being moved in this long primary uh, season by the most active partisans on both sides. You see the kind of legislation that they're bringing up, they're working on, is, is feels more like the two most active parts of each party. So policy is affected, and more so because of the duration in, in many significant ways. The second is uh, unique thing is this calendar. You've heard this term front loading, all these states moving forward, big states moving forward. I also like this. This is much maligned and hanging by hanging by the front of the tree above. Uh, this is you know, either they don't know it's the reality because we've never seen this before. This <coughs> one that guy award and the answer is important. Oh yes, it'll make them more important. We really don't know. What I do know, what I found troublesome. Uh, in past presidential elections is the extent to which problems that are unique to Iowa or unique to New Hampshire or unique to only South Carolina uh, become so omnipresent in the choosing of a, a candidate. They don't represent the problems of the country. And I think these, some of these big states that are coming forward and have to be campaigned in vigorously will bring a panoply of those issues that the whole country faces. So I think that's a good thing too. And it also requires more, it is an important skill to be able to go in retail politics, uh, the likes of which are necessary in New Hampshire and Iowa. But it's also important, critically important in the information age, to be able to communicate. The third um, thing that people like to, on the doctors, they like to talk about the money, all the money. There is a lot of money. We just ended the first quarter, we read these stories. Lots of money, uh, but relative to the job you're doing here, picking the leader of the free world, it, at the current rate of what we're anticipating will need to be raised for this exercise, we are still not spending more on the presidential election than we do on Easter egg or Easter candy for one year. Okay, so for one day, we spend more on Easter candy, so let's get a grip, which is a little higher. Last cycle, it was how much do we spend in yogurt in a year? So.
I really like this, is the uniqueness of the field. It's, it's the most unique field we've ever seen in this country. We have no idea, it's heartening in so many ways, and we have no idea what effect it's going to have on voters. What do people, what does it have affect their vote, voting behavior, religion, or race, or gender, or health issues? I remember when the, the vice president was the, um, heading up the committee to pick a vice president, and the, then the governor said, well, I, I've gone through my list, and I think you're the, the best guy. And he was just the first issue of the problem against himself, was I have heart disease. So his father had the same heart disease, lived to be 93. It's not a completely treatable thing. Well, now we have, with three or four candidates, Fred Thompson announcing today, or speaking today, of his lymphoma, the cancer sufferers in the field. That's unprecedented. Song is it is. The fifth unique thing, I love this too, and if anybody's involved in the history, this is a fascinating time to be doing a dissertation or a thesis on this. Both parties are at the crossroads of what it means to be a Republican. What does it mean to be a Democrat? What is a 20th, 21st century uh, ideal for a conservative or a liberal? Neither parties uh, or both parties' trajectories uh, going to Defining a 21st century conservative liberal were truncated by the various events in the Clinton and Bush tenure. So this is all new territory, all the young people. The, the next thing is, um, this is, well, we don't know how this is going to work. All of these, the congressional races taking place concurrently with the presidential race. Typically, these congressional races tend to follow wherever their presidential nominee is going to be. I, you know, I don't know this time because there's a real sense that the House majority could be taken back. And I don't know if the landscape is as um, fertile, if you will, for, uh, on the Senate side. But that means there'll be battles and attempts at that uh, in, in those races as they will be at the presidential level. I the um, the next thing, and this is, goes to the age in which you live, this is the first campaign that is taking place really in the full throes of the information age. And it's manifested by all sorts of things that campaigns don't like, which is to lose control. They don't like YouTube. They don't like things that, you know, disallow them to control their message and their, what they're needing to deal with every day. He went from in 50 days from not having an ounce, not having an email list, to having 100,000 donors on the internet. Couldn't have happened without the internet. And they have, and they understand that they need to get that passion uh, into action. And that's, that's all new. They, and they, I have to say they're way ahead. The Democratic Party is way ahead of the Republican Party, uh, which we just saw in using the internet for raising money. I think part of it, that you guys actually know how to do this. And then finally, obviously, and the most important and really thrilling is the issue terrain in this information age. It is uh, so many challenges, but so many potential solutions. The technology of the information age is, does hold the key to so many of our problems. If it's national security, energy issues, the economy. We have a completely different uh, economy, a global economy, which causes some pressures in this in this country, but it's uh, allowed. Like smart men, women are more attracted to men more smart than men are more good looking, good thing for him. So I said, <laughs> like, I think he's beautiful. So he said, well, I had a 4.01 graduation today. I'm like, whoa, I can't please him. I said, business, he's cute, he's funny, and he's brilliant. So when we got married uh, in New Orleans, I drove down to his alma mater, Louisiana State University, some of you may know of it. James was there, you probably didn't know this, James was there on the 11 year program. <laughs> <laughs> so when I, I looked up his academic record, and he did have a record there, and it's one that holds to this day, he received 55 hours of consecutive Fs. So I went thrown back up from Baton Rouge to New Orleans. I said, what's with the 4.0 on graduation day? That was my blood alcohol level. <laughs> <laughs>